Hi friends. In this video, I will be experimenting with charcoal and chalk pastels. You can see I have a piece of charcoal along with a white, pink, and blue chalk pastel handy. You might also want to keep a damp paper towel or rag nearby. If you have received this Make Art Kit, you will notice that you have multiple sheets of newsprint and one sheet of lovely white drawing paper. Newsprint is a perfect paper for practicing on. It's nice and big and really inexpensive. So try out these techniques on the newsprint and then mix all of your techniques onto your final piece of drawing paper to create a mixed media drawing of your own. The first thing to experiment with is how you're holding the charcoal. A charcoal pastel has a very different shape from a pencil or paintbrush. Try making a mark with the charcoal and then turning the charcoal in your hands and then drawing again to see what different effects you can get. The side of the charcoal that I'm using right now must have a little notch out of it and so it's giving me a really neat double lined effect. But then if I just turn the charcoal and use another side, you can see I can get an even, thick, dark line. Patching is done by drawing a series of parallel lines. Lines that go all in the same direction. I'm going to add a bunch more hatching lines and fill this area here because we are also going to use these lines in order to experiment with a little bit of cross hatching. And in order to do cross hatching, we're just going to draw some more parallel lines, but this time they're going to go across the lines that we drew in the first place. This kind of swirling circular motion that I'm drawing in now is actually a technique called scumbling. Now I'm experimenting with stippling in charcoal. And stippling is done just by placing tiny dots like I'm doing here. And you might notice that if the dots are a little bit closer together, that area might seem a little bit darker than the areas where the dots are spaced further apart. Now I'm going to change how I'm holding the pastel so that I can use the flat side of the pastel and do a broad stroke across the page with the full surface of the side of the pastel. In this rectangular area that I'm drawing out, I am going to shade from darkest to lightest. And the technique that I'm using is called the back and forth stroke. It's the most basic coloring shading technique. You've probably been doing it ever since you've been able to hold a pencil. I want to spend a little more time thinking about this dark to light transition. And so I'm going to draw a circle here and I'm going to try to use shading and highlighting to turn this circle into a sphere. To do this, I'm going to start by filling the area with a very light layer of shading. I'm shading this circle to look like a sphere as though light is hitting it from that top right hand corner of my page. So the area in the top right hand quarter of my sphere will be brightest because that is the spot that is being hit most directly by the light that I've imagined. And in that bottom left hand quarter, the light isn't really able to reach and so that's why it's so much darker. Next, I'm going to use my fingertip to just blend in all of these areas and hopefully create a smoother transition of dark to light, mostly focusing on those dark areas for now. Okay, I think I'm happy with how things are blended out now. I do want a little more lightness in that top right hand quarter of my sphere, so I am going to come back in with a white chalk pastel. But before I do anything, I need to take care of these charcoal fingertips from all of my blending. So I'm going to just give them a rub on my damp paper towels. Now I'm going to take that white pastel and just highlight that top 
quarter in the right hand side just to create that illusion of light hitting that sphere and hopefully creating a more three-dimensional look. And I can use my finger to blend that white pastel into the charcoal. Now that we've tried out a few different drawing and mark making techniques, let's experiment further with blending. I am going to start by blending with my fingertip and I am going to try moving in different ways to see what sort of effects I can get. Here I am trying a circular motion over the dots in the stippled area. And I will blend in the same motion over here where I practice drawing scumbling. Over these hatched lines, I'm going to try blending in a back and forth motion, moving in the direction of the lines and then moving across the lines. In this cross hatched area, I will try out circular blending again and a little bit of that back and forth as well. Now I will blend over this dark to light shaded area, moving right across from dark to light. And I'm curious to see what that circular motion will look like here, so I will try that too. I hope that you feel that you can experiment freely as I am doing here, testing out different gestures and motions to see what sort of effects you might like to use in a charcoal drawing of your own creation. Artists who work in charcoal will use various tools for blending, not just their fingertip. Some blending tools are specialty items that can be purchased at art stores, but you might have some other blending tools just lying around your house, like a Kleenex or this cotton swab that I am using here. Lastly, I am going to try to use the charcoal powders to draw. So I'm pressing hard in this area to grind down the charcoal and get a small amount of powder. And now I will use a paintbrush and I'm just dipping a dry paintbrush into the powder and moving it around on the paper. It creates a really lovely soft effect. It almost looks as though I've blended without creating any solid lines. And while I have all of this powder here, I might as well use some more of it up and I'm going to use a cotton swab this time. It seems as though this gives me a slightly more defined line than what I get from the paintbrush. Now that I have experimented with charcoal and different mark making techniques, I am curious to try these same techniques, but with color and see what happens when I'm blending in colors as well. And you can see just as before, I'm not defining certain areas. I'm not making a lot of rules for myself about where I'm applying these techniques or with what. I just want to play and kind of warm myself up to these materials. And I hope that you will be able to approach your experimentations with this same sort of playful mindset. Do take time to experiment and remember those things like turning your pastel to get thicker lines or thinner lines, or try that shading from light to dark again. Experiment with blending techniques again. Try your finger and try out a cotton swab like I'm doing here. Remember to try out different directions and movements as you're blending, moving vertically, horizontally, or in a circular motion. Now let's try experimenting with layering and blending colors. I'm going to start by putting a few strokes of blue over this pink area and blending across them. I'm going to see what happens now when I blend my colors a little more deliberately side by side. So I'm going to color in a little area of blue and right beside it a nice solid area of pink and then I'm going to finger blend over the entire thing. In the bottom area, you can see I'm moving across, and then in the top area, I'll move vertically. Now I'm going to experiment with adding just a little bit of light and dark to a color and blending that in. And now, because I really wanna challenge myself as I'm learning these drawing techniques, I'm going to experiment with drawing a circle and trying to create that three-dimensional sphere effect again. 